Well, YouTubers, it's been a while since I've uh, done anything on uh, the Big Wheels turning site, and I haven't been doing much on the Red Barn boat site either. Uh, I've been doing a lot more boat designing, and this, as far as the scoots go, uh, this has been a uh, really wet uh, winter and fairly cold for a Seattle area, so I haven't been right in Rosie. I think I November sometime, and then last week I took her out. It was a sunny day, so I wanted to go out and get my skill level back up. So I took a nice little ride back through the countryside. But this one is going to start off a new little series uh, that I'd left off on the Honda Elite 250. And uh, I was over at a friend of mine's, uh, Wayne's place, and uh, had him help me with his torch to heat up the front fork. Now, there was some stuff here I didn't... Uh, videotape. Uh, I probably should have, but I didn't know whether I was going to be able to resurrect this thing. And until I could get the front fork uh, straightened, uh, that it wasn't really worth my time to uh, even continue this project, just to either junk it out or part out the, the scoot. So let me reset up here to show you what I did in order to save it. This uh, Elite, Honda Elite, only has about I don't even think it's 7,000 miles on it. And it was uh, the owner, uh, it was a friend of mine that just passed away. His father uh, had it and uh, brand new, 80, what, 89, I'll have to look at the uh, 86, whenever the hell this thing was made. Uh, somebody pulled out in front of him and the forks were bent back in and off to this side. And the head here was kind of twisted back in a little bit. So I took my Dremel and cut all the welds along here and then up around the neck here all the way around and then I had a rod that would fit through let me go up to the head here I had a rod that fit the perfect inside and then I had a spacer ring that would fit the larger diameter down to the bottom perfectly and so I set up the uh, the grid on the floor I uh, drew a straight line, marked a straight line grid on the floor, set the frame of the uh, scoot over it, hung a bunch of, you know, found the center of the frame and then leveled it and hung a bunch of plumb bobs over on various points on, on this frame to line it up on the, uh, on the line that I had drawn on the bottom. So then I was able to take the tube, go back over here, that I had and physically, since this was free and was only held on this one side, I was able to rotate this part around and out until I got to where the rod that was going down was centered on the string or on the line and everything was plumb in place. So then I was able to clamp it with a, with a big set of vice grips across here and it held and it stayed there and I drilled two pilot holes in here. I don't know if you can see them or not. Let me zoom in. I drilled two pilot here. It really is hard to tell that I've got the thing painted in. Back in here and set these these uh, sheet metal screws in there to hold it in place and everything was fine. And then I took my welder out and welded up, welded this part back to the main tube again and up around the top of here. And then I set it back on the uh, on the line again, lined everything back up and then I had the center of the tube coming down and it lined up on the string line in front. Plumb bobs were all in alignment. Uh, everything was still level in frame, so I, I was 95% sure that this was back in track again. The only problem uh, was the, um, the front forks. And then I took the, like I said, I took the forks over my friend Wayne's and he had a torch and a big uh, vise. They were able to hold it in and start moving this part up in here in through the head around. Also at the same time uh, I had a friend mill turn down a metal rod about that long. Uh, maybe it's about eight inches long because I didn't know how strong uh, the metal would be after I'd be torching it. So there's a metal piece of metal pipe that goes up inside the inside of the head part here to act as a strength and it also acted as a final um, straightening. After we got it nice and, and red all the way around, 
then we're able to move it around with a you know a dead blow uh, to get it in shape and then we drove I drove the pin in as uh, Wayne kept the heat up and it just kind of brought it back in we checked it with a 90 degree that he had it was a little bulky uh, and it seemed fine at the time and I thought well I'll, um, I'll have to go with that so uh, when I brought it home I was able to set it up in a vice grip that I have here or a, a, a jaw horse uh, and then check it again with a more of a machinist uh, 90 and uh, as going around the perimeter it's you know I, I couldn't see it was that, that off so uh, it'll be living with it whether or not it it tracks dog legs down the road or not I won't know or if it hopefully it won't shimmy and you know I'll, I'll probably fire it up and ride it before I do a lot of body work on it just to see uh, if it's you know it's worth the continuation or you know just junk it out again so we'll see I think I got it uh, fine so uh, now I got to decide what comes on next. I didn't, I didn't write down how I was taking it apart. I thought, well, I'll be quick enough. I'll have it all done, and I can remember it well. <laughs> you know, you get the gray hair, and uh, it's like, you know, all those thoughts are gone. So now I'll have to uh, figure out uh, what the order goes in. I'm probably going to put the front suspension back on the front wheel, clean off the engine and mount it back in the frame and then put everything on the floor and then go back to um, probably the wiring harness and some of that stuff and then slowly work from the inside out again so we'll see when we get there so uh, this will probably be the end of this video just a little quickie to show that we're back in line uh, I may show something as I'm putting you know put on the uh, front suspension again so well I got the front shock on the side there's a little bit of squeak in this thing but it's got pressure on it, it goes away. I had put tape on it that said left hand and right hand. <laughs> I was putting the, the one that said left left hand on, or right hand on over here, and I thought, wait a minute, you know, I forgot that when I numbered these things, it was from the writer's perspective. So they didn't seem to right, want to fit, and so I swapped them around once I realized that. So now they're on there. Well, I've got the registration from 1988. So this thing, almost like I said, had hardly any miles on it. The brakes lining is perfect. So we've just been having to clean it up a little bit. The, uh, the brakes themselves, almost no scoring on them. Uh, I cleaned out the grease inside that goes for the uh, speedometer screw back in here. And I'll put some uh, Yamaha race grease, which is basically a, a lithium-based grease, which is probably the same thing that Honda used in there. So, And then here's the little shaft with the gears for the... It's like uh, on the T-Max, the uh, speed sensing unit. This is just a little gear. And that's probably the part that wears out. Fits in. And then this part slides in like that. I'm going to get a fill of grease and put it back together. In fact, the tire, I pumped it up and it's, it's holding air. And the rim says it's suitable for tubeless and it's got uh, Dunlop uh, F11s on it. But, you know, they're 1988, so I'll probably replace these once I get it going. Well, I got the front wheel back on and it was a real pain. To get that traction, I call it a traction bar, I don't know what they call it, dog bone or something like that, keeps the, the front, uh, this thing in here. <laughs> I think I had the wheel off about four times before I finally figured out where the hell I go. I had to put this rod in place and hold it. It says, okay, well, it'll go around in there, but uh, I got a level, you can see down here on the, on the frame, I got the frame level, and when I set in the seat area, and I looked down at it, it looks pretty good. So, I guess maybe it will live. But, uh, yeah, I almost wished I had new tires because it's, you almost have to redo, undo all of these bolts up in here in order to get enough freedom for the thing to come out. But it's holding air, so I'll check tomorrow to see if it's still, the air pressure's still up. But, uh, so much for the day. And, uh, I think probably the next thing I'm going to do is uh, take the engine outside and clean it off. 
and then get it reattached to the frame and then I'll be able to move this thing in and put the handlebars in and I'll be able to move it around in the shop a little bit better. But I'll have to go back to working on the floor and I need to figure out where I'm going to get some room. Probably up on the other end of the shop I can move some stuff around to get this thing out of the way. Either that or I can move Rosie back. I almost need to make an addition to the barn just to have all my toys in. So I have more room to build boats. So we'll see you guys later.